All right, first, uh, that was a weak clap. First video in a minute uh, on anime or anything, really. Uh, and we have Attack on Titan Chapter 125. Uh, what many would consider the the manga of 2019, if not the entire anime itself. Uh, and let's see if it keeps it going 2020. Uh, I'm going to probably do a quick summary here. Uh, not really much in depth, and this is really not a chapter that you can... I mean, you can draw a lot out if you want to, but, I mean, you kind of don't really need to, per se. So, the main three narratives here will be Ani, um, kind of everybody that's left out of the, uh, the Survey Corps, and then, um, yeah, one of the towards the end is, is Levi, obviously, and, uh, hopefully you, you read this before you came here, I, I would hope you did. So, we kind of passed the point of still being in awe of the Titans, we've pretty much moved past it, I mean, they're there. And, um, people kind of recovering from it here. We see everybody kind of trying to make do with things, uh, trying to rationalize this incredible event that has probably killed hundreds, I would imagine, at this point, if not more. Uh, Jaegerist, as they call him, the, uh, Jaeger apologist, uh, contraction there. And this is everybody else trying to realize that it was either us or it was them. Uh, which I mean, in the, the barest sense, I guess that is true. It's a little bit deeper than that, I feel like. But um, some of the survey course uh, members that I don't even know who this is. Uh, Hitch, obviously one of the uh, closer to an OGs, I suppose. Uh, she runs back to the uh, the remaining castle, I guess, and uh, she's continuing on getting you know more munitions and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I guess they, they very quickly realize that the civilians uh, won't be holding together very long. And I mean, let's be honest. These people just saw, uh, what, a hundred titans pop up and just crush everything. Some of those titans only intending to eat, you know, everybody else. I mean, this, I don't know why anybody could rationalize what's happening right now. I mean, this is just horrible. Um, so here we see Hitch looking down. She sees a trail of water. Um, we already know what this is, obviously, as a reader, but, I mean, this is just an amazing realization for, I imagine, anybody that knows of Ani's former location, and, uh, we see the, the queen posted up, uh, did his throw off whoever would come, and, uh, yeah. That, that ring, we haven't seen that ring in so damn long. That ring is one of the cooler artifacts from this entire, um, series. It'd be a pretty cool weapon to have, I guess, if you needed to, if you needed it. So, uh, yeah, Hitch isn't messing around. Um, I don't know if Ani's reflex are just so dull about being in the water for so long. Like, she does look dead-eyed, but that isn't the first time we've seen Ani look dead-eyed. And, uh, Hitch just pretty much, like, says, nah, girl, you're not taking me. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, she's, like, still dazed and confused, so to speak. And, uh, Hitch and Ani meet back up. Um, at this point, Ani is like, man, I'm still number one. I can't do this whenever I want to do this. And, um, Hitch pretty much calls her bluff twice, which I think is pretty amazing. Uh, like, I don't think anyone has ever called a Titan user to bluff more than once and gotten away with it, but she did it twice. And, um... For the betterment of, I believe, both everybody, like, being, everybody being Hitch, that person, and everybody else within the general area, I don't think that Ani was bluffing too much, but at the same time, you could tell she was surprised that Hitch didn't, um, snitch on her. So, you know, getting her out of there, we come to realize that Ani was semi-conscious the entire time and her everything that anyone ever talked to her about uh this, this is really the most amazing part is that like so we, we sit there and we think about this crystal um i guess she's kind of in crystallis uh she was in crystallis um and we kind of just thought she was a bump on the log for the last what three years now four years is about uh but no she was an active part of this story and i'm honestly amazed because just how little relevancy i thought Anya would have at this part but it does appear that he was able to make the, um, how should I say, the, uh, the links connect to make Ani important in this story. Just because I didn't think there's that many chapters left. Uh, everything seemed pretty cut and dry, but 
yeah, so we have Thick uh, Lee and Hart coming out, and um, only only Ani could hear destroy the world, you know, see the Titans destroy everything, and like take that level handed handedly, like she's just a different type. I mean, she's like the most what what I want to say placid face of all time. She just doesn't react. So yeah, I think Annie uh Hitch tries to reach Annie, uh her emotions and unfortunately it's just not something that can be done. Although we do get the one thing that does keep Ani human. Um and it's not this it's about her foster father, the one person who I guess cared about her in this life outside of her powers and all that. I guess he beat her down, beat her down, beat her down and kind of mold her into what she is now and even with that being the case he kind of he looped the loops back through and shows her emotion towards the end because he genuinely wanted her to be a strong warrior as we get right here be it the status as a member of the warriors uh, unit or the title of honorary marley and he told me it's already thrown him away as long as i came back home the man was my father he thought of me as his own daughter now I don't know if she was, was she a natural born Eldian? Yeah, the mother's adulterous lover was an Eldian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, she was an Eldian, raised by an Eldian. Uh, she became an honorary Marlene because of her soldier capabilities, of course. And he intentionally, I guess, did that to, you know, keep the family going and, you know, bring shame, uh, honor and money to things, to their, to their living conditions. But I think he realized very quickly that just didn't matter. Um, so yeah, I think Ani kind of is smitten to her uh to what she beholds that's important and i think this this little um what should i say tirade monologue i was a monologue and it kind of helped hitch realize that ani was was kind of human i guess for a little bit but uh yeah we get like another it's such a it's such a neutral mood in this in this story right now for like this to be the background and for you know let me go up a little bit. For this to be the conditions, like people crushed by rubble, tight, like hundreds of titans just came out trying to eat everybody. Uh, Pitts is dead. Uh, Hange gone. Levi gone. Uh, I mean, they have no leader, no commander, and it's just level handed. In Liberia, I believe this is back in Marley. Uh, we go, we flash to the father of, um, of who we just saw, Ani. And, I mean, it's a cool little sequel, I suppose. I mean, it doesn't really mean too much in the general premise of things. But, I mean, it just goes to show that those Eldians um, that are being cast away know what's about to happen. And the Marlians just don't. I don't think the Marlians, I don't think anyone except the Marlians that are on the blimp knows what's coming towards them. Um, but, I mean, it's like a nice little, for the, for the Ani fans, this kind of does a lot for them right here. This little part right here. Give us some humanization of Ani Lean Heart, which is very tough. Very, very tough to, to do at this moment. Uh, but Keith Shadows, um Now, if I'm correct, I thought this was on Marley, but Shadows and them are in Eldia. So that means Liberia is in... Where is Liberia at again? I actually genuinely do not remember. I thought I did. Liberia... Is a Marley and Sidek attention in in him in tournament zone. What the hell's wrong with me? Uh designated area of blah, 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 blah. So yeah, this is, this is a Marley and City. So they hear a gunshot. I don't I don't know how they hear this gunshot. That's my problem. Maybe because see he says eh, like he doesn't know what's happening. I don't know if this gunshot like traveled from an Eldia to, to Eldian to Eldian, like other Eldians could hear what happened. I don't know, but it seems like only Shad has heard that gunshot. Unless this is the gunshot from, um... Unless this happens, uh, synchronous, synchronous, synchronously. Uh, at the same time, with this moment right here, I could, that's something I can imagine. It happens at the same time as that. Uh, that makes more sense than this bullet traveling. Through space and time, so shadows could hear it. Uh, anyway, so yeah, the Jaegerists are, are taking control of the fortress. The Jaegerists are still a real thing. Um, the, the what's left of them, anyway. 
Um, Shadis is beaten down. You know, he did everything he could to clear up the fortress so the um, the um, the Survey Corps could have the munitions and stuff like that. Um, Shadis is a goat, of course, and uh, he plans on holding this down as it is. He says, "Don't try to oppose the Jaegers by any means, and you should do what you can for yourself." Um, so yeah, Shadis, um, important. You know, shout out to Grisha. This part doesn't really matter. I mean, just every time I see Mika Silver uh, arm and talk, it's just annoying at this point. I mean, they literally just are a waste of, of characters. Uh, the military chain command is broken down. It's complete chaos. Armin being a hoe once again, crying. The one thing I guess he does say that's relevant, there's nothing we can do. We don't trying to think about Aaron right now. You understand that. Mikasa is still entranced completely into worrying about Aaron. I think he realized at this point there's nothing he can do about that. She's, uh, you know, the um, the Ackerman blood is still working its effect on her. She can't care about anything except Aaron. Um, even her little, like, piece about Connie, like, I mean, that's like faint emotion, really. Mikasa sucks right now. She's a useless character. And Armin isn't much less useless. Uh, this is probably the most useful thing he said the entire part is this, that Aaron should have been revived. I don't think anybody would sense would hope that Ern should have been revived. Um, the muffler, I don't know what that is. I don't know, you know the muffler. Is it, is it supposed to be this? Where is the muffler at in the first place? I don't understand where that was at. Anyway, there, there's a muffler somewhere. I don't remember exactly where it was, but moving on. Um, another Gabby moment with the family from um, Marley. Uh, well, no, the, she's from Marley. Uh, the family from Eldia, um, you know, she came through her and uh, Falco and Kind of got the new um, identity step and all that nonsense. Um, they they killed, you know, she killed Sasha. Why am I restating this? Let's keep it going. So we get to the most, you know, interesting part of this so far. Uh, Flock is still holding on the block here. Uh, Gene and I believe the rest of the crew is kind of sitting here trying to, uh, you know, kind of buy time, control the situation as much as they can. Um... I'm not completely sure about what hap what was happening to like I know the Jaegers got like um it was like a Titan can through like start eating them or some shit like that. And that's all I can generally generally remember from the last chapter. Um and yeah, so Flock is crazy. Who is Flock again? I I don't remember who Flock is. I remember Flock I, I think the name I think I can remember the name. The name was like Stu was an asshole. Um He's like the lead one that like was he the one that killed um Zachley? The one that put the bomb for kill Zachley. I may that may be his relevancy here. Uh, I'm gonna have to take a uh, a little side. Was he the one that was bitching when Erwin was about to do the uh, speech to participate in Erwin's? Okay, 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 okay. I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's the one going crazy when that shit happened. Okay, I remember that. Uh, losing his mind. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember this. Okay. So, Flock was a piece of shit. I do remember that. Uh, Levi got piped. She was the one, he was the one leading him out of there. I can remember that. Okay, okay. I think I'm starting to remember. Um, what are the volunteers? The anti Marlian volunteers can be detained. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Mm hmm. All right. So Flock is a piece of shit. I remember that. Yeah. Um, Flock is a horrible human being. Uh, so they got like the anti Marlian um volunteers rounded up and shit. They're working with the um the core in this effort, but obviously, I guess the de facto leader de facto leader was a guy who you know, was sucking Aaron off the hardest, which doesn't really make that much sense. He also stuck up Hange and, and Levi at gunpoint. Probably shouldn't be the leader of anything. 
Uh, but the volunteer, this volunteer guy, who I thought was actually a person, apparently he has, like, no name or, like, identity, um, got his shit blown out, um, uh, Gene is just like, man, this shit fucking sucks, man, why could somebody else be doing this? Uh, <laughs> so yeah, Mikasa's, uh, fucking butch ass comes in there and is like, yeah, if I'm Aaron's represent, I'm Aaron's representative, um, Flock needs to be killed. Flock needs to die. Somehow he reaches Gene, who I think Gene's just an idiot. Um, but you know. So yeah, the last he knows is that they the two of them died. Um, and you know, Connie, more Connies. We got uh Flacco, I believe this is, or whatever his name is. Flacco, whatever. Um who gives a shit about? Who cares about Flacco or Connie? I really don't understand what this story is about. I don't even fucking know why they even matter. Um, I know he had the Titan or some shit, and he like he I think he fed the Titan in to save Flacco. Who gives a fuck? Um, so we have the the blimps going back. They're like, oh shit, we're fucked up. Get the fuck out of here. Uh, cart Titan. We got Peak and um, guy that is sticking up Peak. I don't know who that is. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we do anything. <laughs> So we got at this point we got guys sticking up Peak and uh you know Peak, uh and now she's like oh, I'm gonna fucking chomp the shit out of you, um and Levi Ackerman is still alive somehow, some way Levi Ackerman is bleeding out and um he's still alive I don't even know that's possible I don't know how at all Levi Ackerman is still alive. There should be no way that... I mean, you just think about this shit. Levi is a human being. That t tanked that explosion. I guess you can say tank he's still alive. He tanked that explosion and didn't get killed. Now, I know Levi is a goat, but uh, Levi is a human being at the end of the day. And you mean to tell me that Levi... <laughs> <laughs> Point Blank Rage, Levi got hit by that explosion and didn't immediately just die. Now, that's not even human at that point. I know Ackermans are, you know, they're Ackermans. They're, they're cool. They're, they're great people, whatever, whatever. Point Blank Rage explosion. Look at the state this dude was in. And he's somehow alive. So, yeah. Um, uh, we get to this point. And, um, I guess this guy has some kind of history before. Anyway, so that's really the entire chapter. I mean, it's not really much else. I didn't know who the fuck, I didn't know, this is what I'm going to end it on. I didn't know Yelena was a woman. This woman's like fucking like six feet tall. <laughs> this could be the WNBA. You mean to tell me Yelena's a female? I don't, I don't believe that for a second. That Yelena's a female. I don't believe it. I don't believe Yelena's a female. Now you can tell. You can go however you want to go for this. I don't believe Yelena's a female. And that's about it. I know Yelena's a female. I'm sorry.